Sharon. What is our first main topic today? Our first main topic comes to us from Sean Wren. Hey, John and the Funky Bunch. Hope you're having a cracking week. We are. Thank you. My favorite film franchise is James Bond, but it looks like I will be waiting for a while for Bond 26. Speaking to Deadline, Barbara Broccoli stated the next 007 is at least two years away because they're reinventing the character. While I'm cool with the wait to get a plan together, I worry about the reinventing comment, especially after No Time to Die and Craig's era. What do you folks think? Cheers. All right. Thanks a lot for sending that in. And yeah, listen, the, the biggest topic of conversation, I mean, month by month, it'll change like from some DC topic or some Marvel topic or some Star Wars topic. But overall, who's the next Bond is always one of the topics, right? That's always one of the big discussion points around movie fans, water coolers. Who's the next Bond? So Barbara Broccoli, the High Lord and Emperor of all things James Bond, was asked, so who's in the running right now? Who's in the running to be the next Bond? And she said the following. She said this. Nobody's in the running, <clears throat> which I thought was interesting. We're working, uh, we're working out where to go with them. We're talking that through. There isn't a script, and we can't come up with one until we decide how we're going to approach the next film because, really, it's a reinvention of Bond. We're reinventing who he is, and that takes time. I say that filming is at least two years away. And that, of course, comes from Barbara Broccoli. And by two years away, that means, at minimum, the next Bond film actually coming out in theaters is at least three years away. Now, I know when people see that phrase, we're reinventing Bond, I can hear the gasping panic <laughs> sweeping across the world like a great disturbance in the forest when millions of crying voices cried out in terror mm -hmm. and then suddenly silenced. Um, here's the thing. I really don't read anything into it at all because when you look at Roger Moore to Sean Connery, George Lazenby, Timothy Dalton, uh, uh, Daniel Craig, Pierce Brosnan, whatever, Every single time a new Bond has come in, there has been, to a degree, a reinvention of the character. Mm -hmm. they, they haven't been the same. They, they all hold some core identity, absolutely. But, like, again, when you look at Timothy Dalton's Bond and, like, George Lazenby's Bond, they're two different characters in, in most respects. So when she says we're reinventing the character, I, I know that semantically you can look at that and and your mind can go to this terrible place that he's now going to be a new york club dj <laughs> um who collects nikes and likes to you know pop bottles on like, wh whatever i get it where people minds will go there i think that's an overly extreme interpretation of what she said because rob she's also said recently when asked about hey have you have, are you guys considering giving us a female bond and she talked about, she didn't just say, no, 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 Bond is male. She talked about there are certain core things about Bond that always need to be there. And one of those things is that he, he's a guy. James Bond is a guy. So she clearly recognizes there are core essentials about Bond that will always need to be a part and focus. So when she says reinventing the character, I honestly don't read too much into that, other than the fact that you're going to get a slightly different interpretation, just like they do every time a new James Bond actor comes along. <clears throat> to me, the more interesting thing, is the whole idea that we're at least three years away from another movie. And I like the fact, Rob, I got to say, that they are saying, we're not going to bother casting this character until we got a script. Because you want the actor you cast to fit that script. You don't want to have to write the script to fit the actor. Once you've got your Bond who's going to be Bond for a few years, yeah, then you start doing that a little bit. But I kind of like that they're taking this approach. Anyway, Rob, in that one short statement, there is a number of things to unpack there. Mm -hmm. So as you look at that, as the biggest Bond <laughs> fan here, uh, what did you interpret out? What stood out to you the most? Well, you know, I always think back to 1995's GoldenEye, Pierce Brosnan's first movie, when Judi Dench was introduced. And one of the great video games of all time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and when Judi Dench was introduced, she, she looks at Bond and she says, you're a sexist, misogynist dinosaur. You're a product of the Cold War. That's James Bond in a nutshell. And the problem is when James Bond was created, we had the Soviet Union. You had, you know, communism was the big right. threat. There was mutually assured destruction. And 
the world that James Bond was created to serve does not exist anymore. Mm. So I think one of the one of the real problems with making a Bond movie is who's the villain? What's he supposed to do? Who's he going after? War now is asymmetric. Uh, it's it's completely different. So you have to when they say reinvent Bond, I think what they really mean is what are we going to have Bond do? Mm-hmm. Like like, and I think with the Daniel Craig era, they made Bond more personal. I think they're looking around. You know what? If I was looking at James, if I was if somebody said Rob, you have to make a James Bond movie. You know where I would look to? Top Gun Maverick. And in Top Gun Maverick you would have an, a sexist, misogynist dinosaur, a product of the Cold War, who has been given, a, he's tasked with training a, a new a new secret service, new MI6. But this is an MI6 that has come to, come to, they've grown up in a world where HR departments are accepting all kinds of complaints. You can't just bed every beautiful woman you want. You have to worry about, have you harassed them? You know, you have to make sure that that all kinds of people are, there's representation. And what does a guy like James Bond do? He's like, cares. And everyone else is like, no, it's time for you to care. And you could do that. You could make a new James Bond who is now put in charge of MI6 and do something different. And I think that they're, they're struggling because what are you going to do? When you have Ethan Hunt and you have the entire Impossible Mission Force doing Fallout, that outbonded Bond. You know, and and all these other movies, whether you're watching Dwayne Johnson or whether you're watching Jason Statham, you know, you're watching Hobbs and Shaw. How do you make James Bond relevant for our audiences today? And I think that's what they're trying to figure out. And it's tough. And I think that they really have to do some soul searching because this is a character that every year that goes by becomes less and less relevant, at least in terms of its literary, how it was originally created. And I think when they say reinvent James Bond, I think they really mean that. And I think it needs, I think the character needs reinvention. Casino Royale was a great film. I think all the other Bond movies. I think it's my all-time favorite Bond film. It's great. But even the Craig movies became, they wanted to make it one long story. And even Skyfall was more like the Dark Knight meets James Bond, you know, the Joker with Silva Mm. and all that. I just think it's a tough one, man. And I, I, I don't envy the task. But hey, I'll be the first in line for the new book. It's an interesting observation you make because you're talking about it being in danger of becoming irrelevant, right? And some other people who are looking at the smaller picture may say, well, hey, wait a minute. We are in an era right now of Bond films that are the most successful Bond films ever made. Yes, but that's hanging on to the vestiges of, I think, the last... Kind of gas. I love the way you say it. It's not so much James Bond hasn't changed. The world in which James Bond is in is changing. And I, I love that observation on that. Anyway, we want to Aaron- take a moment and thank the sponsor of today's video, Stamps.com. Now, guys, as a small business owner myself, I am always looking for ways to save costs. Yes, but I know that our most valuable resource is time. And I'm always looking for things that can save us time. Stamps.com saves you both. Because when you're running a small business, every second counts. You can't afford to waste a single moment. So why are you still taking time out of your day to go to the post office when you could be using stamps.com instead? Stamps.com makes mailing and shipping quick, easy, and cost effective. How cost effective? Well, you can get discounts that you can't find anywhere else, like up to 30% off USPS rates and 86% off UPS. And there's no special hardware technology you need. All you need is your regular computer and printer, no special supplies or equipment required. So guys, stop wasting time and start saving money when you use stamps.com to mail and ship. Sign up with the promo code CAMPIA for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts needed. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, and enter the code CAMPIA. Observation on that. Anyway, Aaron, you, you hear about this. You hear these words, three years. We're not looking at anybody yet. We don't have a script. We're reinventing Bond. There's a lot, again, one short paragraph, a lot to unpack. What stood out to you in that statement? Well, I think that it's to say that um, we can't cast James Bond until we have a script. I don't think that that's necessarily true. I think that this is a chicken egg situation because so much of how that how that actor is going to be as Bond mm. will inform the script. It's the same thing. I always like to go back to um, the very first episode of Friends, the pilot of Friends. If you go back and watch it, it is terrible. Now, you may say, well, it was still terrible 10 years later. That's all an opinion. However, the characters were very flat. You know, it was like Joey was the guy and he liked the girl. It was like it was very 
static. And then all of a sudden, as the show went on, the characters became more of the actors and the actors became more of the characters. They became more intertwined. So I feel like the best way to reinvent the Bond franchise is to figure out who epitomizes Bond today, who epitomizes the kind of misogynistic, machismo, you know, big dick swinging dude that still makes sense and isn't isn't just gross. But don't you have to first figure out, like you just said, who embodies this, 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 and this? Well, what? But don't you first have to figure out what you want this new actor to embody? Like, don't you have to decide that first before going out to get the actor to fit it? Yes. However, as Barbara Rockley stated. There is a core essence to this character. There is a the, the core of who this character is that is not going to change. So figure out okay who let's create our master list of all of the different actors that we can see playing this part whether it's Timothy Chalamet or Michael Fassbender or Idris Elba and I'm just shouting out some names from the chat here ooh John Cena you know he's my first all favorite I don't know if it works <laughs> but you know I like the I like John Cena for anything. So figure out who's our master list of who we could consider. Okay, who best epitomizes what we see as a as a current Bond and then create the script that makes sense for that actor, knowing that that actor is going to play Bond for the next three to five films. I think that it's a chicken egg situation and they go hand in hand. And that's what I would do because at the end of the day, the script is just story. The script is story. Bond himself is character. And that so much is going to depend on who is playing that character. So I think the idea of we're going to write a script first and then we're going to find an actor to fit in there. Well, that just that that's always going to be finding, you know, a square peg to fit in a round hole. Create the hole to fit. Uh, <laughs> 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 if you go the glory hole, he will come. Ladies and gentlemen, wow. our, our aviation gin <laughs> shot of the day uh, goes to uh, Aaron to Cummings. Back. So often shot I do it on day. purpose, and that time it just happened. Sometimes the genius just happens. No off position on the genius switch. There you go. Wow. Now, I mean, look, <laughs> I, 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 I disagree. I mean, I, I disagree with that. Like, I always think the, I always think you cast the, the, the right actor, because when you're talking about you know, what actor fits the role? Like, and I think one of the things that she's saying when she says, I want to, we're going to reinvent the character. And I think that what she's saying is we need to first figure out who this Bond is going to be. Who is James Bond now? Actually, you know what? Let, let's go back to that for a second. Jonathan, could you bring up her statement again? So uh, yeah. This is what she said. Because um, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing back up just to refresh my own memory here. So nobody is in the running. We're working out where to go with them. We're talking that through. There isn't a script and we can't come up with one until... We decide how we're going to approach the next film because really it's a reinvention of Bond. We're reinventing him and who, where it takes time, blah, 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 blah. Okay, but what about um, Heath Ledger as Joker and then Joaquin Phoenix as Joker? Like, sure, there was a script, but that Joker by Joaquin Phoenix was a complete reinvention. And without having walk, I guarantee you, if you took the very first Joker script pre Joaquin Phoenix being cast in it and you compared that script to the final product, those things would be very different. Sure, but Christopher Nolan talked about that situation specifically. He said, like, because he, he talked about this when everybody, when the world exploded, when they announced that Brokeback Mountain Boy was going to be Joker. <laughs> He said when him and Jonathan, who's his, his brother, he said when we sat and looked at that script and then saw Heath Ledger, we knew he is he can do this guy. This guy and him are right on. So that's actually an example of where the script dictated for Christopher and Jonathan Nolan that Heath Ledger was actually the guy. And then the rest of the world who blew up at the idea, well, we blew up at the idea because we didn't know the script. Right, but we I'm did, talking about the Joaquin Phoenix version. Right, which the script, that, that came first as well. Before, Like, Joaquin signed up because of the script, I believe. But I still think it's a chicken-egg situation. Right, right. And it can go either way because, again... James, they're not just bringing on this James Bond for one film. They're talking about James Bond's got to be there right. hopefully for three, four, five films. Right. Anyway, guys, the question is for you. A lot of things said there by Barbara, Barbara Broccoli in a short amount of time. What stood out to you the most? What stands out to you the most? Do you still have a favorite person to play James Bond? Mine is still Henry Cavill, of course. Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and leave your thoughts there.